My life be like wow, yeah. My life be like wow, wow, yeah. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Really Red Dad Podcast, Red Dad Games Edition, uh, Coach Chad Edition. Man, that's a mouthful to say. So we are catching you guys up with week 12 of our 2025 season. Uh, with Coach Chad in Coastal Carolina. Before we get to the pick game, let's go to where we stand on the season. We just had a horrible loss against North Carolina. Um, didn't really want to, you know, underestimate them or anything like that, but I feel like we kind of did. We came out cocky. We um, we were up 14 nothing at one point, and then we just let them come back. We let them off the hook, as uh, as one coach would say. I can't remember his name. He coached for the Cardinals and the Vikings, if someone would help me out there. But anyway, Dylan Raiola just had a stinker of a game. Six interceptions. Had a nice second half, but it wasn't enough to come back. Um, we actually had a nice comeback with about a minute left on the clock. They had 54 seconds to take it down the field, and they actually did. Um, our defense played a very nice game, but uh, that last drive killed us. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the summary of the game, honestly. Um, if you see the score by quarter, you know, we had the comeback, but uh, they came back. Scored a touchdown with 13 seconds left. So that's kind of where we stand on the season. This is our schedule so far for the year. What we've done, uh, next we're going to play Pitt. And then the next episode is likely going to be our ACC championship game. Uh, Might be the bowl game. We'll see who we play in the ACC championship game, if that game is worth uploading. But let's get to season stats afterwards and then awards, recruiting, and then we'll get to the – Get to the uh, game. So let's Two go to hours later. stats on the year where we stand, all of our guys. Um, try to make this as quick as possible. I know I could take quite a while before we actually get to game time. 21 touchdowns, 14 picks. Good year, not great. Uh, again, we don't run it a ton on the ground, but since our last episode, Evander Sosa went down for the season. Um, that is just a killer. But Dante Diggs had a nice... He had a nice game a couple weeks ago with 100 rushing yards and 56 receiving yards. Our receivers have been playing very, very well this year, especially Gunnar Brown. No love in the uh, Bolitnikoff Award for him, unfortunately, though. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this guy's killing me, my right tackle. Honestly, I'm thinking about switching him out pretty soon, but I don't have a ton of depth at the O-line position. So it's kind of a tough, uh, tough one there. Here's our stats on defense. And then our kicker is up for Luke Rose Award um, as well. But before that, let's get to award semifinalists, Heisman finalists, semifinalists, I should say. And then the college football playoff rankings. Uh, the Neric Award, Willie Gandy is up there with nine sacks, nine sacks. O'Brien Award, Drew Allar, redshirt junior from uh, Penn State. He's a real-life prospect also. So he's uh, one of the top quarterbacks from this from this uh, upcoming 2023 class, I believe. Um, or 2022 class, maybe. But anyway, um, yeah, you're seeing Gunnar Brown isn't up here. I mean, he's just been a beast for us all season, and he got cut from the Bolitnikoff Award semifinalist somehow. Lombardi Award, Gandy and Albert are up there, which is nice to see. <clears throat> Buckus Award, I'm a little confused why uh, Trey Brown isn't on there. But Mike Jones has been absolutely shut down this year. He's been, in my opinion, one of the best top five corners I've ever had. I mean, he I don't know if he's allowed to catch this year, if I'm being honest. Watch, I say that now, and I play my game, and he's going to have a shit show. But, uh, yeah, my kickers and punters are always right there. The Jet Award was added with the mod. That's returner of the year. So let's go to the 
um, college football playoff rankings, and then recruiting, and then let's play this damn game. Ohio State, East Carolina. There's a lot of um, teams with weak schedules, which is kind of scary because it might be hard to sneak back up into the top two. Uh, that's going to be tough. We got undefeated teams ahead of us. So, I mean, we beat Oregon, but that's not how they're going to see it. You know, some of these teams are going to cannibalize each other. Um, so I think at the end of the day, we're probably going to be number three or four. Um, but you never know. Don't want to hold out, you know, don't want to lose hope. <clears throat> That's a full college football playoff ranking. Then Heisman watch real quick. Uh, Tajay Spears, Darson, Drellar's up there. Of course, of course, there's always a Bama running back up there, even if they're like a 70 overall. Um, let's go to our recruiting, see our guys. We are ranked number six in the country currently with um, respect to top classes. Um, so, yeah, we're behind some pretty big programs. Look at Wisconsin doing work up there with Mississippi State, by the way. And check out our guys that we reeled in thus far. We're really focusing on – linebackers, athletes, and corners. So Clint Walker, he's kind of a guy that we found. Um, he's a small guy, but man, his uh, numbers are off the charts. 88 man coverage, 88 zone, 91 speed, 91 excel, 86 agility. <clears throat> really excited about this class though. I really am. So, um, the focus, because we're losing a lot of linebackers, um, it was definitely linebackers. We got a fullback, which is nice to have in there. 79 outside, overall outside linebacker, he's probably going to start day one. The defensive ends, he can never have too many pass rushers, in my opinion. So we got a really nice kicker there, too. Oops. Um. Good kick accuracy, not the best kick power, which mostly is what I look for. But, yeah, that's our class. <clears throat> so let's dive into the game against Pitt. So yeah, Pitt is three and six. Um, I just want to show you the jerseys that they have on this game. I know you guys might have seen these already if you follow College Football Revamped, but um, – Man, these some of these are so fire. They got the custom gloves. Steel City is probably my favorite one. Throwback home. You can't go wrong there. Throwback away. 2018 home. You know, you got the, the gold and darker blue. <clears throat> um, let's go with something home. Whatever. Got a lot of the Navy jerseys. Let's just go with our main alternate. <clears throat> and then I'll just go with my default. Uh, Jordan Davis there. He's had a hell of a camp for the Eagles. I still don't know how he went 13th overall. They traded up a couple spots to get him, but the guy's a menace. I don't care about the questions of his motor. If he plays 30 or 40 snaps a game, <clears throat> I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Even 25 snaps, you know, plug him in for run stuffing situations. They still got a lot, you know, Milton Williams are still developing. Eagles drafted in the third round a couple years ago. And uh, Javon Hargrave, former Steeler, uh, he made the Pro Bowl last year. And they brought Fletcher Cox back, who's going to be 32, I believe. So they got a lot of guys there in the middle for the Eagles. So, I mean, they can get away with plugging in Jordan Davis, 25 snaps starting off and see where he stands. Another reason why I wanted to play this game specifically at the end of the year, not only for the mid to late season update, but um, Heinz Field, they just changed the name of it. It's always going to be Heinz Field to me. But this is one of my favorite stadiums in the game. Um, I'm a West Virginia guy, obviously. I like their team, love their traditions. Um, so I'm not really a pit guy football program. Um, you know, the whole shit on pit 
But uh, you got to respect Heinz Stadium. Got to love this stadium if you're any type of football fan. <clears throat> Hope they don't change the name on college football revamped, which they probably will, but that's okay. Got to keep it up to date and current. I also like the um, advertising on this stadium because it's they keep it real. It's the real stadium. They try to get it down to exactly what you see if you were to travel to Pittsburgh's field now. So, yeah, obviously it's the Steelers stadium also. We want to wash that last game, that bad taste out of our mouth. So we want to get a 50 burger today. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to kind of beat around the bush there. I don't want to get over aggressive though at the same time. So um, really trying to be smart still. And in doing so, I'm going to get out. <clears throat> We're going to go no huddle. Um, try to get a nice tempo going. <sighs> My uncle actually went to pit. Um, he's a plastic surgeon and, uh, they grew up in the, uh, Pittsburgh area, sort of a couple hours away, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure he wouldn't be too thrilled to hear my shit on pit thing. <laughs> but I'm a West Virginia fan now. It's funny. Cause I watch West Virginia now just from, you know, obviously from watching Pat White, Steve Slate and all those guys back in the day, but, um, Using Coach Meckley and going through his journey definitely helped me out with that. Um, you know, now I follow them, and I'm excited for them facing Pitt um, in the backyard brawl. The game got flexed actually Thursday night on September 1st, Thursday nighter. So I'm really excited to watch that. You got to give it up, for Pitt's jersey, so they might have one of the sleekest in the entire country. We're going to go fake jet halfback dive here. We're just going to go all gas, no brakes today. Nope. <clears throat> they saw that coming a mile away. If I handed it off to the guy going in motion, probably would have gained at least five. <clears throat> But that's fine. You know, third and eight, that's still manageable, still manageable. We're looking for Gunner. Don't want to force it, though, obviously. And we would have forced it there. There's really nothing, so I'm just going to chuck it in the stands, honestly, which is okay, you know. We're going to take the points and get on defense. Kobe! Kick is good. Oh, come on, take it out, take it out, take it out. Ah. Yeah, you got to appreciate the real um, ads on the billboard there. You got the McDonald's, you got the Xfinity, PNC. Definitely, um, you see PNC Bank, that's a big Pennsylvania one. They definitely stay true to that. Xfinity, that's a Pennsylvania one also. I believe their headquarters is in Philly. They got a giant skyscraper there in Philly anyway, so I'm assuming that's their main headquarters anyway. I love the, the, the trophies on the backdrop there. Oh, come on. He just fucking glitched right through them. <clears throat> this is hopefully going to be a big rebound game for us. You know, I don't want to look at them and say, oh, we're going to roll over them. But this needs to be a big rebound game for us, especially on defense, giving up all those points. Definitely our worst performance on defense. Although they played well, it's just tough when we had seven turnovers also. By far the most turnovers I had since taking over at Coastal Carolina. So... You know, you can't blame the defense too much there. Really can't. Ah, bounce it. Come on. Keep going, keep going. Oh, man, he's just chugging. 
Keep those lights turning. I want to try to run it a bit more on this drive. All right, nice gainer, eight. Um, let's go to a little screen. I love dumping it off to Diggs. He's a really good receiving back, very underrated. He had six catches, 56 yards a few games ago for me, too. I don't think so. you have any idea how fast I really am. Oh, how look at that. He's following his blocks perfectly. Touchdown. Chanting. How do you All right. All right. Nice start to the game. All right. You know, this was recorded mainly to kind of give you an update of where we stand on this season. If it ends up being a blowout, then it is what it is. But um, at least you got the update on us for the season. Miami is a team I'll play the final week at home. That'll be my senior game. Seven and two, they're ranked, and they're unranked, which is surprising because even if they're fucking – Five and four, they like ranking them. <laughs> so it's interesting to see them unranked. <clears throat> They're a nice team, too. They, you know, obviously recruiting is so much easier down south. I get guys from Florida all the time going to Coastal. So um, definitely a hot hotbed for recruiting on this game. Um, you know, someday maybe I want to go to Syracuse. But at the same time, it's tough to recruit up there, which is a nice challenge. I'll give you that. But, oh. Picked off. Nice. Definitely a nice challenge. But um, yeah, if you have a school in, I don't know, Texas, California, Florida, it is so much easier to recruit there. I don't care what school you have. If Even if it's like, I don't know, TCU, you can build for a couple years and then the recruits just come flooding in if you're in Texas. <clears throat> now notable uh pittsburgh pittsburgh alumni lewis riddick he's by far my favorite analyst um he's on espn he does a lot of monday night football um he interviewed for the general manager position i believe or vp of personnel basically um, I was really blown away when he didn't get it, actually, because he is the most knowledgeable guy on TV, in my opinion. Uh, him and Charles Davis. Charles Davis gets shit on a lot, but um, those are two of my favorite guys. And um, Lewis Riddick has done it before, too. He worked in the Eagles or organization for a long time. So it was definitely surprising to see that he didn't get the GM job. Um, but, you know, he'll find a better opportunity somewhere. He, I mean, guys like him tend to stick around. He knows the game. He really knows the game. A lot of these guys just kind of make shit up as they go. Not him. He does a lot of research, and you can tell when he um, will announce a game, definitely. Shit. Oh, I didn't mean to press that one. That's not a good way to go I'm going to go to the other back I kind of got tripped up there that's okay we'll get it back we'll get it back we'll get it back I was looking up the uh, school record for touchdowns in a season at Coastal Carolina <clears throat> and it's 28, so not to speak too soon, but we're kind of on our way with Dylan Riola to break that record. Um, don't really like talking about records much until the season's over, but it's definitely something to look at and be cogn cognizant of. Nice stand there. Nice stand. All right. Just going to send that. Kind of in a time crunch a little bit here. 
<clears throat> Got to go to work in about a half hour. Oh, my God. He is just getting locked up. Got to chuck that. Got to throw that away. Man, Brown was just getting held up stride for stride with a corner off the line, just getting bumped. Man, he's just battling out there. Gunner Brown is just fucking battling. Ah, tried to get past him right there. End of the first. <clears throat> Northern Illinois, number five, got a win today. Doesn't ever help us. <clears throat> nice little run there. Nice little run. Guys can't move. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of work on the run a bit more today. Try to well, rely on that a little bit more. Well, that ain't happening. Fuck. He just got fucked up. Damn, dude. Um, let's go Texas. Let's go to Texas. Oh, I saw the safety blitzing. So I knew that whole spot would be open. There we go. <clears throat> Trying to get Gunner over a thousand. I think he should easily be able to get over a thousand, but I want to put him in the Bolitnikov running. It's just, man. Tough not to force it sometimes, though, when you're doing things like that. Oh, all right nice sometimes it's just better to keep it i mean everyone was locked up it looks like they were in man coverage so easy six right there got the speed to go by the safeties as well just kind of toasted the safeties on this drive honestly <laughs> oh they're locked up all right all right <clears throat> I like working with uh, George Brockton, my uh, redshirt sophomore defensive end. He's a Juco guy. Um, 81, I believe, overall. He's just easy to use. He's 6'5", fucking huge. George the Gorge Brockton. Um, not in any award runnings, though, so I'm trying to get him into some kind of category. Um, it's nice to use him and then have Gandy come off the other edge and not really have to worry about him because he, he's up there, as you guys saw earlier, for a few awards. <clears throat> there he goes. Nice. Nice hit, too. All right. Pause and resume it. Hmm. too far ahead but uh, it'd be nice to show you guys our younger players to sub in later but i'm not worried about that right now oh my god this line has been rough this year there's there's no way around it i mean if you see like clearly that i don't even think there's anyone to sub in to kind of suffice right now which is why i hit the recruiting trail really really hard for <clears throat> guards and tackles um i don't i think matt smith starts oh no he doesn't you know what let's kind of let's see what happens because it's it's been rough it's, it's been rough <laughs> it's your day
Awareness is, wow, 57. That's really rough. I think pass block, run blocks all the way at the end. Yeah. Yeah, he's a little better in pass block. Run blocks a little lower. Impact blocking is better, though. So let's see what we got in this guy. He's a redshirt sophomore, too, so an 81 is pretty solid. I know the in-game bonuses kind of give him a little more, but... There we go. Block, block. Ah, gunner. All right. Nice gainer. Nice gainer. I really wanted to see what the corner was going to do, if he was going to bite on the run or keep going with the receiver. He obviously bit on the run, so we, you know, just had a nice little pass there for a nice gain. I might leave Rayola in the whole game, to be honest, just to get him more reps, morale kind of thing. Oof, he got hit. <clears throat> 78 yards on the ground, only five carries. Awesome to see that. I don't know if they'll be looking for the run here. No. Oh. Let's go no huddle. And you already know. You already know. Texas. Kind of a broken play on this game, I'm not going to lie. Oh, my controller died. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Let me pause. Uh, come on, get open. Oh my God, shitty throw. Come on. Oh man. That rush comes so fucking fast. I swear. Do the same damn thing. Maybe I'm dumb for trying it again. Oh, well. Is that a first at least? No? Oh, my God. We're going for it. What the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just something simple up the gut. Just a halfback dive. That is a long yard. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I don't know if they'll be looking for the pass. No touchdown? Oh, my God. This is like... This is like watching paint dry. I mean, come on. <clears throat> nice stand by the defense. Got to give it to them there. And I, I didn't know they won nine national championships. Hello. That's kind of wild. It's John C. Nice touchdown there. Put us up 24 0, pending the extra point going into half. And there it is. We actually forced them on a three and out on the next drive, so we might have a chance to get 31 before half, get another seven. <clears throat> That'd be cool. Oh. Okay. Probably a poor decision to catch it there. Yeah, Rayola is pretty much the whole team currently, which is fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's go with that. Try not to force anything. Brown has been getting locked up today. I'm not even going to lie. So it looks like he's on someone else right now. Try to take advantage of that. Go, go, go. All right. Nice 27 yard reception there for Gunner Brown. 62 yards on the day before half. I'd like to see that. Mm. Yeah, take your time, bud.
Mm. Not a not a smart decision on the pass there. Luckily, the linebacker was turning the other way right there. Not the smartest pass ever. <clears throat> about quarterback draw. Catch him off guard here. Got to keep an eye on that clock. Got 40 seconds now. Oh, was not getting good blocking there. So not a great, not a great stand. Not ideal. Do a little mountain PA flood. We'll play action. Oh, nice catch. I saw that he broke his coverage early. He won the battle at the line of scrimmage, so he was going to get open for a sliver, and he caught him right there. Perfect throw behind the safety because the safety bit on the tight end coming over, so I know I had a very, very, very tight window to throw it there. So gladly, luckily, we hit that for a touchdown to seal this thing before half, hopefully. 31 nothing. We will pause and resume in the, probably like the fourth quarter. <laughs> Got a 53-yard field goal coming up here. Looks like that's going to be spot on. 34 nothing. third quarter. So I called a time to throw in the subs here, see what happens, show you guys Kyler Stone and Joe Lowe, kind of what they can do. I'm going to have a nice little dump off here to Diggs unless Lowe is open or if it's covered. And Lowe's open. <laughs> kind of wanted to go a little more to the left of the field there, but uh, very, very, very lucky it wasn't picked off right there. Oh, God. I know we're up big, but let's just keep gas on the pedal to the metal. Kyler Stone, there we go. Your number one overall recruit for the 2025 class. <clears throat> I do a screen here, see what happens. Been kind of lucky, honestly. I've been kind of trying to fit balls in where they don't belong. Jesus. Man, this defense has kind of been on it the last half, really. Scored most of my points the first quarter. Uh, early part of the second. Keep trying these screens. It's just my kind of offense, honestly. Joe Lowe. Gotta love the name, too, by the way. That's not a name I changed. <laughs> nice little 13 yard snag. There's Joe Lowe. The fit. The fit. Uh, let's see. A little read option here. Oh, it looks like they got this one sniffed out. So I'm going to go Texas. Oh, look at Kyler Stone. Kyler Stone. Get in. Oh, man, he got whacked. Jesus. Nice route. Nice route. Then he got thumped. Let's try that again. I want another passing touchdown here. I got to get over these short yardage situations here anyway. Oh, my God. The, his feet weren't set, which didn't help, obviously. But we got to get over these short situations. and got to be able to run as well as pass. Um, but we're going to go for the run here. There we go. Three rushing touchdowns for Raiola today. So a nice bounce back win for him. Nice bounce back win. We'll pause again. Try not to turn it over here. That's the key. I got Jackson in now, so. You know, he could take off. Nice little five-yard gain. I like Jackson a lot. Hasn't played um, incredibly well this year, but um, he's a good player. He's a nice, 
quarterback, honestly. If it wasn't for Raiola, I'd start him in a heartbeat. But um, I didn't honestly anticipate to get Dylan Raiola. I created him. I even put him from Ohio to, you know, kind of nudge him towards Ohio State, as I've said before. But it just worked out. Sometimes, just in general, these four or five star players don't get picked out for some reason. And it just so happened to be our guy that we created. And yeah, I know it looks sketchy, but that's honestly how it worked out. So, oh, look at that bomb. Nice. Nice catch by Jared Brown right there. <laughs> he saw that he was breaking away from the defender running down the field. Kind of improvised there, a little Josh Allen action. <clears throat> oh, shit. Jackson got hurt. Tyler Stone. Oh, we spun the wrong way. <laughs> It's okay. You know, I'm glad I could get him in and get him some reps as well. So, always nice to see. Uh, Bryce Archie is a really nice quarterback, too. I believe he's a junior, and he's like an 86 overall. So, oh, my God, they snuffed that one out. Jesus. You know, their run defense has been very stout today. Um, Elliot Donald, I don't believe he's related to Aaron Donald. Um, I think I looked him up before. Uh, I'm going to keep in Archie. He was 84 overall. You know, I got a lot of really nice quarterbacks on the team. I'm really, really, really fortunate. <clears throat> but I did do my research on the recruiting trail, definitely. Man, I just wanted to just shoot that ball out as quick as possible. Wasn't able to, however. So we'll pause again. We did a little simming, so looks like they fumbled and we recovered it. So let's do another drive and then end on that note. Kind of see what these young guys are capable of now. Oh, I didn't, I was mashing X. I actually threw it to X. <laughs> That's okay. I don't want to mess around too much, but it won't hurt. All right, the whole defense is going that way, so I'm going to do that. Knock that out of bounds. Definitely rubbing salt in the wound, but you kind of have to with these games, especially after you lose against an unranked opponent. Um, you gotta, gotta squeeze as much out of these wins as you can, because at the end of the day, you're getting ranked by the college football playoff committee and you want to have as good of a resume as you possibly can. Oh, oh, there we go. Nice. I was waiting for that route to break and I hit it at the perfect moment. So I'm going to try to get a touchdown here before we wrap this episode up. Thank you all for watching so much, by the way. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms as well. Um, Red Dad Pod, you know, Coach, whichever it is, the um, link or the, you know, the handle is going to be under the comments or under the uh, description of the channel of the episode. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, and, uh, yeah, have a good one. Let's go. All right, another touchdown. We got 48 on the board. We're going to have after this um, extra point, very close to a 50 burger. We're sniffing 50 burger territory. But nonetheless, a very nice win to um, seal the deal on this and get us back on track.